Katie, today on this live stream slash recording, we are going to go through all of the new adult fiction releases that are coming out in April 2024. This is actually part two, so if you are interested in the rest of them, check out part one. All of those are going to be in the description down below if you are listening slash watching a recording. Um, you can find that over on our YouTube channel if you are watching live here. All of our books that we are going to go through are in the description. They should be uh, below. And uh, we had a whole bunch of technical difficulties, so Carrie's not going to be joining us today, which is a huge bummer. So you're going to be listening to me yap this whole time. <laughs> um, so we have about 13 books to go through today. So bear with me as I go through them all. We have a ton of different ones that are coming out. We have uh, lots of great authors here. So let me get started on our first book. You can see on Wrong Way, you can see over here if you are watching live or on our YouTube channel, we do have a QR code that you can scan. So if you are interested in any of these books, it'll direct you to Amazon. And we are an affiliate site as well. So anytime you do purchase a book from us, we do get a tiny commission. So thank you so much for that, by the way. All right, we are now officially going to get started. The first book that I want to share with you today is The House on Biscayne Bay. This comes out or came out April 2nd. And apparently this is about a gothic mansion in Miami. So it's like a tropical gothic story. So it says, with the Great War finally behind them, many American flock, Mary, many Americans flock to South Florida with their sights set on making a fortune when wealthy industrialist Robert Barnes and his wife Anna build Marbrisa, a glamorous estate on Biscayne Bay. They become the toast of the newly burgeoning society. Anna and Robert appear to have it all. But in a town like Miami, appearances can be deceiving, and one scandal can change everything. Years later, following the tragic death of her parents in Havana, Carmen Acosta journeys to Marbrisa, the grand home of her estranged older sister, Carolina, and her husband, Asher. On the surface, the gilded estate looks like a paradise. But Carmen quickly learns that nothing at Marbrisa is as it seems. The house has a treacherous legacy and Carmen's own life is soon in jeopardy unless she can unravel the secrets buried beneath the mansion's facade and stop history from repeating itself. This sounds fun. I am really getting into the tropical gothic vibes here and themes. This is by Chanel Clayton and it's published by Berkeley. This is the house on Biscayne Bay. Alrighty, so let me change over to our next book, which is The Hungry Dark. This is a thriller, so if you are looking for a macabre thriller, this is where it's going to be. It says, macabre murderers plague a rural town as a scam artist psychic races to find the answers in this haunting thriller. This is by Jen Williams, and it came out April 9th. And it not a ton of people have read it so far. It's got decent ratings on Goodreads. So it says, as a child, Ashley Whitelam could often see odd things nobody else could. Quiet, watchful figures she called the heedful ones that kept a strange vigil wherever she went. As an adult... She keeps these visions to herself, which is, I guess, understandable. Uh, but she's turned her taste of the beyond into a career as a psychic, parting people from their money with a combination of psychology and intent re internet research. When the Lake District is gripped by a series of grisly murders, child murders, which is even worse, I guess, um, Ashley offers her services to the police for the free publicity. But... As Ashley leads the police on a fruitless search around the small town of Green Beck, she catches a glimpse of those old ghosts of her childhood and following them into the woods, she finds something she never expected, the corpse of the latest missing child. So this is going to be a very suspenseful fat page turning book. Uh, this is called The Hungry Dark. It's a thriller. I probably will pick it up. This is definitely up my alley. This is by Jen Williams. My next book on the list uh, for today, which is cute, 
I like the fire in the background. You can see it over here with, where the QR code is, the, the book cover. It says, I cheerfully refuse. That's the title. This is by Leaf Anger already. I'm digging it. It's got some good reviews already on Goodreads. This came out April 2nd. So what it says on Amazon is a storyteller of, quote, great humanity and huge heart. Uh, Leaf Anger debuted in the literary world with Peace Like a River, which sold over a million copies and captured readers' hearts around the globe. Now comes a new milestone in this boldly imaginative author's accomplishments, accomplished resonant body of work. This is set in not too distant America. It's a tale of a bereaved and pursued musician embarking under sail on a sentient Lake Superior in search of his departed, a deeply beloved book selling wife. Rainy, an endearing bear, an endearing bear of an orphan, orphanian narrator, seeks refuge in the harbors, fogs, and remote islands of the inland sea. Encountering lunatic storms and rising corpses from the warming depths, Rainy finds on land an increasingly desperate and illiterate people, a malignant billionaire ruling class, crumbled infrastructure, and a lawless society. Holy cow, this has got a lot in here. This sounds like a Dante's Inferno-esque zombie apocalypse. Anyway, amidst the Gulliver-like challenges of life at sea and no safe landings, Rainy is lifted by physical beauty, surprising humor, generous strangers, and an unexpected companion in a young girl who comes aboard. And as his innate guileless nature begins to make an inadvertent rebel of him, Rainy's private quest for the love of his life grows into something wider and wilder, sweeping up friends and foes alike in his strengthening wake. Sounds interesting. Maybe I'm wrong about the zombie thing, but anyway, this says, I cheerfully refuse. This is by Leaf Anger, and it's supposed to be pretty good. This is published by Gro Grove Press. Let me just triple check. It is a dystopian fiction novel. It seems like it's going to be actually cheerful at the end, hopefully. Anyway, our next book for today is called Immortal Pleasures. This came out today, April 16th, if you are watching live. So this is about an Aztec vampire roaming the modern world, the modern earth, seeking vengeance. So hundreds of years ago, she was known as La Maninche, Malinche, Malinche? a Nahua woman who translated for the conquistador Cortes. In the century since, her name has gone down in infamy as a traitor, but no one ever found out what happened to La, to La Malinche after Cortes destroyed her people. In the ashes of the empire, she was reborn as Milanali, an immortal vampire, and she has become an avenger of conquered peoples, traveling the world to reclaim their stolen artifacts and return them to their homelands. But she has also been in search of something more, for this ancient vampire still has deeply human longing, longings for pleasure and for love. When she arrives in Dublin in search of a pair of Aztec skulls, artifacts intimately connected to her own dark history, she finds something else. Two men who satisfy her cravings in very different ways. Uh, for the first time, she meets a mortal man, a horror novelist, who is not repelled by her strange condition, but attracted by it. But there's also another man, an immortal like herself, who shares the darkness in her heart. So now she is on the most perilous adventure of all, a journey into her own desires. So this sounds really interesting. This is called Immortal Pleasures. This is by V. Castro. It came out today, and the publisher is Del Rey Publishing. Next on the list today is one that looks really, I'm, I'm pretty excited about it personally. I also need to triple check my chat box here and just see if, Ever, anybody's commented. I see that Cookbook Divas Shops has. I hope everything is working out, Carrie. <laughs> anyway, here's our next book for today. It is 
Indian Burial Ground. This is by Nick Medina. Uh, so this also came out today, April 16th, and this is published by Berkeley. All, no all Noemi Brussard wanted was a fresh start with a new boyfriend who actually treats her right and a plan to move from the reservation she grew up on, just like her beloved Uncle Louis before her. Things are finally looking up for her until the news of her boyfriend's apparent suicide brings the world crumbling down. But the facts about Roddy's death just don't add up. And Noemi isn't the only one who suspects that something menacing might be lurking within the tribal lands. After over a decade away, Uncle Louie has returned to the reservation, bringing with him a past full of secrets, horror, and what might be the key to determining Roddy's true cause of death. Together, Noemi and Louie set out to find answers, but as they get closer to the truth, Noemi begins to wonder whether it might be best for some secrets to remain buried. I'm excited for this one. I will be picking it up. I can't wait to, I cannot wait to read it. It is Indian Burial Ground. This is by Mick, Nick Medina. All right. So we have about eight more books left, by the way. So stay tuned. Stay buckled up. Our next book is called Oh, and I have to switch it over here. So again, for those of you watching live or the video recording, you can press on this QR code and get access to the book itself. So this is The Murder of Mr. Ma. This came out April 2nd, and it's by S.J. Rosen, and John Shen Yen Mi is the author as well. This is similar to Guy Ritchie's Sherlock Holmes films, and... It seems like, okay, so it is both authors simultaneously have written this book. I like that. It's always fun to have two authors kind of co composing something together because they kind of work together. I don't know. It's really fun. Anyway, two unlikely allies race through the cobbled streets of 1920s London in search of a killer targeting Chinese immigrants. So this is more of a psychological thriller, murder mystery. So... We have 1924 in London, shy academic Lao She meets larger than life Judge D. Ren G. His quiet life abruptly turns from books and lectures to daring chases and narrow escapes. D. has come to London to investigate the murder of a man he'd known during World War I when serving with the Chinese Labor Corps. Uh, no sooner has D. interviewed Interviewed the grieving widow, then another dead, dead body turns up. Sorry. Then another, all stabbed to death with a butterfly sword. Will D and Lau be able to connect the threads of the murders, or are they next in line as victims? So we are blending traditional, and I apologize if I say this incorrectly, it's Gong Gongan crime fiction with the most iconic aspects of the Sherlock Holmes canon, Dian Lau's first adventure is as thrilling and visual as an action film. So this sounds like a page turner. This is The Murder of Mr. Ma. I love the cover. It's really, really fun. Uh, so check that out. It's by S.J. Rosen and John Shen Yen Mi. Next up today is Mur. This is by Polly Hall, and it came out April 9th. It says on Amazon... A woman searching for her birth parents unlocks the secrets of her horrific past. She tries to stop the goblin within this kaleidoscopic, dark psychological horror about identity and belonging. And it is really, I mean, this is going to be perfect for fans of Eric LaRocca uh, and Catriona Ward, although I would not put those two in the same category personally, but that's just me. So Mur, our main character, has a goblin inside of her, a voice in her head that tells her all the things she's done wrong, that berates her, drags her down. I feel like we all have little goblins. They're, these, Polly Hall has listened to some Brene Brown, I can tell. Desperately searching for her birth parents across dilapidated seaside towns in the south coast of England, she finds herself silenced and cut off at every step. Uh, Cyan, or yes, Cyan, is trapped in a loveless marriage, the distance between her and her husband growing further and further each day, 
longing for a child. She has visions promising her a baby. Then we go to Myrrh again. As Myrrh's frustrations grow, the goblin in her grows louder and louder, threatening to tear her tear apart the few relationships she holds dear and destroy everything around her. When Cyan finds her husband growing closer to his daughter, Cyan's stepdaughter, and pushing her further out of his life, she makes a decision that sends her into a terrible spiral. The stories of these women will unlock a past filled with dark secrets and strange connection connections, all leading to an unforgettable, horrific cl climax. So I'm excited to check this one out. I love dark psychological horrors. Personally, this cover is really cool. This is called Murr, and it is by Holly Hall. Next on our list today is Oracle. This is by Thomas Old Hoovelt. And it comes out April 30th. It is a supernatural thriller where an omen from our past threatens to return, threatens the return of ancient forces that will change the world forever. Well, look at the cover here. Very cool. On a foggy winter morning, high school kids Luca and Emma discover the impossible. The wreck of an 18th century ship stranded in a flower field. Ooh. That's fun. So Emma enters the hatch on the deck and is never seen again. That's not cool. And she isn't the last person to disappear. Soon, a government agency begins to investigate, determined to uncover, uncover the ship's secrets before a media storm erupts. They enlist Robert Grimm, a retired specialist of the occult, to unravel the mystery and soon realizes the ship could be a harbinger of an ancient doom awakened under the sea. Oh my. So in a maelstrom of international intrigue and pure terror, Grimm and Luca must race against time as they come face to face with an open doorway to the apocalypse. Well, no pressure there, right? So this is Oracle. This sounds fun, like really fun. This is published by Tor Nightfire, which has been a hit or miss for me personally, but I might have to give this one a shot. So far, it's got good reviews. This is Oracle by Thomas Old Hoovelt. Next, we have another book with a cool cover. Uh, looks like Veins. It is Sanctuary. This is by Valentina Cano Ropetto. Uh, this, is, uh, this came out today, April 16th. Grief Leaves a Stain. Uh, Sibylla wants nothing more than to live with her husband in this rundown, derelict watermill. Uninhabited since the Renaissance after a mysterious disaster befell the previous owners. The mill requires extensive repairs, but there is something frightening about the mill. Repairs are violently undone. Half-seen figures begin stalking Sibylla through the grounds, and haunting echoes of the figures begin stalking Sibylla. Oh, sorry. I think I've already said that. And haunting figures begin stalking Sibylla through the grounds, and haunting echoes of the previous owners' lives infiltrate the present. As the disturbance, disturbances grow more vicious and her husband more secretive, she realizes that she and her child are in danger. So this has got similar vibes to The House in the Orchard by Elizabeth Brooks, The Winter Guest by W.C. Ryan, and The Hacienda by Isabel Cañas, which is one that I would really love to read. I've heard really good things about that one. So this already has 4.7 stars on Goodreads so far. Uh, on April 16th of 2024. This is Sanctuary by Valentina Cano Repetto. All right. Next is another cover I really enjoy. I'm not going to lie. I'm a cover girl. <laughs> I, I say. All right. So we have through or a short walk through a wide world. This is by Douglas Westerbeck and it came out April 2nd. This is a national best-selling book. We are placed in Paris in 1885. Aubrey Torvel is a spoiled and stubborn nine-year-old girl. She comes across a wooden puzzle ball on her walk home from school. She tosses it over the fence, only to find it in her backpack that evening. 
Days later, at the family dinner table, she starts to bleed to death. Well, <laughs> how horrible. So medical treatment actually makes it worse for her, and she flees to the outskirts of the city, where she realizes that it is the very act of movement that keeps her alive. So begins her lifelong journey on the run for her, from her condition, which won't allow her to stay anywhere for longer than a few days, nor return to a place where she's already been. That's horrible. Can you imagine you'd have to be on the run all the time and you can never return anywhere ever again? I'd be taking my sweet time, though. Like, I'd just be walking really slow if all I have to do is move. Anyway, from the scorched dunes of the Kalashino Sand Sea to the snow-packed peaks of the Himalayas, from the bottomless well in the Parisian courtyard to the shelves of an infinite underground library, we follow Aubrey as she learns what it takes to survive and ultimately to truly live. But the longer Aubrey wanders and the more desperate she is to share her life with others, the clearer it becomes that the world she travels through may not be quite the same as everybody else's. Well, of course not. She's running from a condition, so yeah, she has no way of settling. So uh, Aubrey is fiercely independent and hopeful. She's been running away since she was nine years old, I would imagine so. She's an unforgettable character, fighting her way through a world of wonders to find a place she can call home. Oh. So this is a, a unique story. Uh, it's not, it's definitely more hopeful and inspiring, but it's got some dark, themes here. So this is called A Short Walk Through a Wide World. Very unique concept. This is by Douglas Westerbeck. Next on my list today is one, I love the title and I love the cover. It's Someone You Can Build a Nest In. <laughs> this is by John Wiswell. We already have, uh, it was published April 2nd. We already have 42 uh, Goodreads reviews and it's 4.2 on Goodreads so far. Oh, and actually that's 408 ratings. So it's been, it's got a good trajectory. So we have, oh my gosh, this is a, this is a name. She, she, Shen has made a mistake fatal to all monsters. Oh, she's fallen in love. I'm already, I'm already really loving this so far. She, she, Shen is a shapeshifter who happily resides as an amorphous lump at the bottom of a ruined manor. When her rest is interrupted by hunters intent on murdering her, she constructs a body from the remains of past meals, a metal chain for a backbone, borrowed bones for limbs, and a bear trap as an extra mouth. Well, that is clever. Good for her. However, the hunters chase Shi Shi Shen out of her home and off a cliff. Badly hurt, she, she's found and nursed back to health by Homily, a warm-hearted human who has mistaken Shi Shi Shen as a fellow human. Homily is kind and nurturing and would make an excellent co-parent, an ideal place to lay Shi Shi Shen's eggs so their young could devour Homily from the inside out. But as they grow close, she realizes humans don't think about love that way. Shi Shi Shen hates keeping her identity secret from Homily, but just as she's about to confess, Homily reveal, reveals why she's in the area. She's hunting a shape shifting monster that supposedly cursed her family. Has Shi Shi Shen seen it anywhere? Oh gosh. Oh, eating her girlfriend isn't an option. Shi Shi Shen didn't curse anyone, but to give herself and Homily a chance at happiness, she has to figure out why Homily's twisted family thinks that she did. As the hunt for the monster becomes increasingly deadly, Shi Shi Shen must unearth the truth quickly or soon both of their lives will be at risk. And the bigger challenge remains, surviving her toxic in-laws long enough to learn to build a life rather than in the love of her life. I, I, I have to say, I'm in. This looks and sounds so cute. I love the LGBTQ plus themes in here. It sounds really charming. It's like a dark, creepy 
romance fantasy. So this is someone you can build a nest in. This is by John Wiswell. We have, I believe, two more books here. And both of them I am very thrilled about. I love Eric LaRocca, and he is now his latest book that was published April 2nd is called This Skin Was Once Mine and Other Disturbances. Eric LaRocca has a really unique writing style, and his stories are incredibly disturbing. So, if that's something you're looking for, extreme, usually erotic horror, but this might be a little less on the erotic and more in the horror realm. It, yeah, it might even be splatter punky. All right, so we have four stories in The Skin Was Once Mine and Other Disturbances. The first uh, story is The Skin Was Once Mine. Here's a summary of this story. When her father dies under mysterious circumstances, Jillian Finch finds herself grieving the man she idolized while struggling to feel comfortable in the childhood home she was sent away from nearly 20 years ago. Then Jillian discovers a dark secret that will threaten to undo everything she has ever known about her father. The next story is called Seedling, which is about a man, a young man's father calls him early in the morning to say that his mother has passed away. He arrives home to find his mother's body still in the house. Struggling to process what has happened, he notices a small black wound appear on his wrist. Then he discovers his father is cursed with the same affliction. The third story out of four of this book is all the parts of you that you, okay, sorry, all the parts of you that won't easily burn. He has these really lengthy titles and he, it always drives me crazy, but I also enjoy them. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. It's, it's like a weird love hate relationship. This one is about Enoch who goes to buy a knife for his husband to use at a forthcoming dinner party. He encounters a strange shopkeeper who draws him into an intoxicating new obsession and sets him on a path towards mutilation and destruction. We can all imagine what that possibly could look like. And then lastly, this short last story is called Prickle. Two old men revive a cruel game with devastating consequences, and that's it. So if you're looking for a very extreme horror, lots of gore, uh, pretty disturbing, uh, definitely check out Eric LaRocca, but check out his latest novel called This Skin Was Once Mine and Other Disturbances. And then lastly, we have a very cool story called To Gaze Upon Wicked Gods. This comes out or came is coming out today, April 16th. April 16th is a good day. It's a publishing celebration day. This is by Molly X. Chang, and the publisher is Del Rey. Our main protagonist has the power over death. Um, and there's a character. It's definitely a dark fantasy romance-ish. So here's what it says even more. I'll go further. Daughter of a conquered world. Ruing hates the invaders who descended from the heavens long before she was born. <clears throat> Excuse me. And defeated the magic of her people with technologies unlike anything her world has ever, ever seen. Blessed by death, born with the ability to pull the life right out of mortal bodies, Ruing shouldn't have to fear these foreign invaders, but she does. Especially because she wants to keep herself and her family safe. Understandable. When Ruing's gift is discovered by an enemy prince, he offers her an impossible deal. If she becomes his private assassin and eliminates his political rivals, whose deaths he swears would be for the good of both their worlds and would protect her people from further brutalization, her family will never starve or suffer harm again. But to accept this bargain, she must use the powers she's always feared, powers that will shave years off her own existence. Can Ruing trust this prince who promises a better world uh, make and makes her heart ache and whose smiles make her pulse beat faster are the evils of this agreement really in the service of a much greater good or will she betray her entire nation by protecting those she loves the most this sounds really similar to oh no i can't remember the book but maybe i just have a thing for 
for female protagonists who have powers over death and princes who are trying to use them for their powers, but then they end up loving each other in the end. Who knows? Anyway, so that is To Gaze Upon the Wicked, or sorry, To Gaze Upon Wicked Gods this is by Molly X. Chang. This came out today, April 16th. And that actually finishes up all of our April 2024 adult fiction novels that are coming out. Uh, make sure to check out the other books for part one, and we will list that in the description down below so that you can click on it, or you can find that on your favorite listening app. We also publish every Wednesday and Friday. We are trying to publish nonfiction, kids' books, YA, and of course, adult fiction and comic books. Come check out comic books too. Thank you so much for those of you that have already subscribed to Dark Side of the Library. It would be really helpful if you could spread the word about our podcast to other people and to check out those show notes as well. Thank you so much for tuning in today. We will see you in the next live stream slash recording. Make sure to comment and let us know what kind of books you guys have been reading as well.